King Samuel confronts Saul and Israel, he had warned the people that they would only benefit from a king who's humble and faithful to God. Otherwise, the kings of Israel will bring ruin. So he informs Saul that God is going to raise up a new king to replace him. And so Saul's downfall begins, as God at the same time is working behind the scenes to raise up that new king. It's an insignificant shepherd boy named David. He's the least likely candidate to be king, but the famous story of David and Goliath shows that God's choice of David is not based on his family status, but simply on his radical and humble trust in the God of Israel. And so this story embodies all of the themes of Hannah's poem. Proud Saul and Goliath are brought low, while humble David is exalted. From here, we watch Saul slowly descend into madness, while David rises to power. So David starts working for Saul as a general, and he's winning all of the battles, and he's also winning all of the fame. And so Saul gets jealous, and he starts chasing David around, hunting him, trying to kill him. David's done nothing wrong, and so David simply runs and waits in the wilderness. And here we see David's true character. He has multiple opportunities to kill Saul, but he doesn't. He simply trusts that despite Saul's evil, God will raise up a king for his people. What's interesting, too, is that many of the poems of David that you find in the book of Psalms are linked to this very period of his life, and they all express the same attitude of trust. And so this section of the book ends with Saul coming to a grisly death after losing a battle with the Philistines. First Samuel tells some of the most intricate, well-told stories you find anywhere in the Bible. And the characters Saul and David, they're portrayed very realistically. And the author's putting them forward as character studies so that you can find yourself in them. So in Saul's story, we see a warning. It's crucial that we reflect on our own character flaws and how they harm us and other people. And with God's help, we need to humble ourselves and deal with our dark side so that Saul's story doesn't become ours. David, on the other hand, is presented as an example of patience and trust in God's timing in our lives. And so he's running in the wilderness, being chased by Saul. David had every reason to think that God had abandoned him, but that's not what he thinks. And so David's story encourages us to trust that despite human evil, God is working out his purposes to oppose the proud and to exalt the humble. And that's what 1 Samuel is all about.